Hey, Strike Eagle fans, Natsos back for part two of the MPT, MPD tutorial. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about uh, where we left off on the, uh, on the screens. I'm going to concentrate on how you actually program the screens now for the, uh, the ability to be able to use HOTAS to be able to scroll through those. Uh, we talked last time about the, the, the screen setup itself, just as a refresh. I've got all the, uh, the buttons around the, um, the screen, uh, PB1 through 20 up to uh, the upper right corner, and then it's three menus deep. Uh, I'm currently on the main menu or menu one, and then the button, uh, when I push it, the number next to it is gonna be the menu that I go into once I push the button. So now I'm in menu two, and if I push the button, I'll go to menu three. Bam, there's menu three, and then if I hit it again, I'm gonna go back to menu one. So those are the, that's just a quick refresh of the screens itself. What I'm gonna concentrate on today is I'm gonna talk about how we program the screens so, or program the individual display so we can now use the HOTAS to scroll through the screens uh, in the order that you want. So, if you notice over here, I've got some uh, screens already programmed. We'll use those up as reference. But let's say I'm gonna do kind of a mix, a normal mix of uh, air to air and air to ground. So I'm gonna program the right MPD to uh, have up to three programs for that display uh, for Suite 4. Suite 4 can only do up to three right now. Uh, later suites you can go uh, more than that, but for right now we'll, we'll concentrate on the three uh, for suite four. So the way you do it, if I want to program up to those three screens, I start with PB6. I'm going to hit uh, PB6 and I'm going to box program. And now I can go ahead and start selecting the, the menu options uh, or the, the individual display options up to three. So let's say I'm going to go uh, twos for number one. I'm going to pick a uh, armament screen for number two. And let's put the um, uh, HUD display, the repeater display up for number three, just if I want to monitor something. So that's that's as easy as it is. You can uh, set those three up, and now the scroll is going to be in that order as I go through. And I'll talk about the actual HOTAS itself. But now you can see it's going to go twos, air to ground, uh, arm, or I'm sorry, just the armament page, and then the HUD repeater. And then it just cycles through all of those as I go. Uh, if for some reason I say, well, uh, I'm halfway through the mission. I've already done all my air-to-ground stuff. I don't really need the armament page anymore, but I've got some other stuff to do, uh, and we're going to come back and shoot approaches. I can replace that screen with something different, and you do it by, again, boxing program, and then essentially you just delete the screen that you want to go away, and then I can put something else in its place. Like In this case, I can put the HSI uh, in there. Notice it goes into slot number two, when you do this, it does not reorder the, the displays that you set up. So it's always gonna go into the slot that you put in before. So if I were to take the twos away and let's say put an ADI in there, notice it's gonna go back into slot number one. The only way that I can actually uh, reorder this completely is I have to take, I have to remove all of them and then I can basically start over from scratch. Let's say for whatever reason I wanted the HUD first and then twos and then TSD and so forth. And then I'll have those screens now in that order as I go. So that's how I do that. So I have all these screens now programmed. So this, the HOTAS is uh, very simple. If you go down here on your uh, front cockpit stick, find the castle switch and it's basically just a short press in the direction of the screens to, to flip those through those three displays. So in this case, I'm gonna go right, short press. I'm gonna go right, castle, castle right again, castle right again and so forth. Same thing over here on the left, I can go castle left. Again, short press, short press, short press left. And then down on the bottom. The bottom is a little unique uh, for the MPCD. Uh, it's a safety feature that they added in for the front cockpit MPCD only. So if you notice, I do not have an ADI program. I've got TSD HSI armament. But the very first time I scroll uh, castle down or aft, I'm always gonna get an ADI page. The reason for that is it's a safety thing for if I'm in the weather, uh, I get disoriented, it's dark, whatever the case may be, and I'm going, oh shit, I don't know where I am, I'm upside down, don't really know what's going on. Rather than trying to fumble for the buttons and then pick, pull up an uh, ADI display, uh, if I scroll aft, I uh, am gonna get an ADI display. The key there is you have to wait five seconds from the last time you, uh, you scrolled so that's been about five seconds. So the next time I scroll aft, I'm going to get the ADI. If I scroll less than five seconds, then I can go through my normal sequence of displays. And I'll stay in the normal sequence until I stop for greater than five seconds. And it doesn't really matter where you stop. 
and then that should be about five seconds and bam there's my uh, adi so really cool uh, safety feature for the um uh for the front cockpit only again so now let's talk about the uh, the master mode programming so if you notice over here i've got master mode programmed against an individual display so let's do it again on the the right uh, mpd so the, what this what this is is if you look right here on your ufc this is how you actually get into the different master modes there's a couple other ways to do it i'll talk about those in a minute but if you just push the buttons uh, against each one of these four master modes air to air air to ground nav or instrument uh, it'll automatically put you into the screens if you program them against a master mode so Notice I've got air-to-air -air master mode against the air-to-air -air radar, air-to-ground master mode against the air-to-ground radar, and then notice I don't have anything programmed against that. I'll get into that in a second. So let's do that over on the right. So again, the way you do it is you start with boxing program, but now over on PB7, uh, you've now got PB7 will allow you to cycle through the master modes. Notice instrument master mode is not one of the selections. So it goes blank, air-to-air, air-to-ground, nav, blank again, it's just a, a rotary scroll. The reason why is because instrument is hardwired in the jet, you have no control over that. Uh, it comes up with a pre-planned set of displays I'll get into here in just a second. So let's program uh, the, um, the screens over here against the master modes. So one note of, of uh, caution, I can only program a screen against the master mode if I've already got it in the, uh, in the program list right here. So for instance, I can't program anything else that's not a um, one of these three. So if I try to, uh, to program it, it'll basically just sit there and do nothing. So let's put the um, uh, air to ground against, uh, let's put air to air against the twos, which would sort of make sense. So I'm gonna click that and notice air to air comes up against it. Scroll over to air to ground. Let's say I'm gonna put the uh, HUD display against that. And then for nav master mode, I'll put the TSD against that and then now let's scroll to something uh, so we're flying along and i want to go into uh, air to air master mode and if i do that bam then all of the screens automatically program to the air to air master mode selection which is what it came up with so it's it's already there and then notice that the tsd should have been the air to air master mode if i want to go to air to ground master mode bam it now puts me in the air to ground master mode screens there and then same for nav master mode it'll put me in in the uh, screens there notice over here i did not program nav master mode so if i go air to ground and nav notice that screen is not going to change if i go air to air and nav that screen is not going to change because i haven't put in a nav programming against it okay so uh that is the um uh the master mode selections so we talked about that the other way you can do uh nav or nav to air to ground master mode is with the castle switch you can just do a short press up and then that will switch between the first time you do it it always goes to air the second time you do it it goes to ground and just it sequences back and forth air to ground air to air air to ground air to air and that's how you do it the other final way to do it is let's say i'm in nav master mode or any other master mode if i use the weapon select switch on the throttle and i thumb after guns that will automatically put me in air to air master mode and it takes command of the radar and it puts the radar into a guns mode. So this is the, uh, the auto guns mode there. So, uh, and notice I can't exit out of air to air master mode, even though I'm pressing it because I'm still in guns. The only way to get out of it is I have to go back to a non guns mode. In this case, I'm in uh, MRM. So now I can go to other master modes as I go. But if I thumb back after guns, it puts me in air to air radar on the left side. It puts me in command and it also um, puts me in auto guns uh, there in the, uh, in the radar. Okay, so that's the, um, uh, the screen programming and uh, doing the air to ground and air to air master mode selection. The final thing I wanna do, I wanna talk about how to take command of a, uh, of a screen. So let's go to, um, in this case, let's go over to the TSD That'll be easy for me to show uh, how that works. So notice right now I'm in command of the air to air radar on the left. I'm using the TDC button. I can scroll the, uh, the, the radar around. I can scroll the elevation up and down. But notice over here, I am not in command of the, of the TSD because in the front cockpit, I can only be in, one, in command of one screen at a time. 
So there's two ways to do it. I can either do what's uh, on the stick. I can do a short press in, so straight in on the castle and release, and then towards the screen uh, castle to uh, take commands. So in this case, I'll go short press in, release, and then right. And now notice I've got the, uh, the bars here that are gonna tell me that I'm in command of that. And now notice over on the radar side, the bars go away and now the cursor is a dash cursor, which means I don't have command. And you won't be able to see it, but I'm trying to move the act symbol around. Nothing's happening until I com take command. The other way to take command is, is very similar, but it's a little bit simpler, is I just do a long press with the castle switch towards the screen I want. So in this case, I'm gonna do a long press left for greater than a second, and then it'll jump, the in command will jump over to the left. So if you watch that, there's long press, greater than a second, and then the, I'm in command of the uh, radar screen. If I wanna go back the other way, so long press right, and bam, there's the uh, uh, in command bars for the, uh, for the um, screen there. So that's it, uh, that wraps it up for the uh, MPD lesson part two. Hopefully that should be uh, everything you want um, so, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it and, uh, I'll do more videos as time allows, uh, from my normal day job. Final thing I want to say is, uh, Livingston, get your butt over here, uh, be a good crew chief and clean all these fingerprints off the MPDs. Uh, you're doing a shitty job of, uh, getting this ready for the next crew. Just kidding, man. I'll, uh, talk to you later. All right, guys, not so out. We'll, uh, chat soon. Say bye.